So let's talk, uh, talk about the Aviatrix software component, right? So first of all, the first thing that you need to know is um, the Aviatrix was found in about 2011, 2012 timeframe. And um, we were actually born in the cloud for the cloud, right? So a lot of vendors I see, like especially the hardware players, they are now trying to lift and shift their physical router code into the cloud. And that's not how things work because when you are porting this code into the cloud, you're bringing all the baggage with you, right? All the, the code and everything, right? So in our case, if you look at the, the gateways that we have, we can easily support T2 micro, which is the smallest in AWS, for example. I, you won't find that uh, from the, the traditional hardware vendor. So yeah, so our product was born in the cloud for the cloud, right? So the number one software uh, component in this platform is called Haviotix Controller. This is your instance that you use, you keep, and you manage, right? This is not a SaaS platform where you're dependent on the SaaS provider or uh, there are multiple organizations and enterprises running on top of that SaaS platform, right? You wanna, you wanna keep uh, the ownership of your, your own uh, enterprise architecture. And then we have uh, Aviatrix gateways, right? So uh, usually you will see them in circle throughout the presentation, but here they are in a different shape, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, so these are our data plane. This is providing the normalized data plane, okay? So that's the gateway icon. And then, I, like I said before, with this controller or with this control plane, we can manage the cloud native constructs, we can manage and control, and then if they fall short, we can actually provide you as advanced networking and security capabilities through our gateways. So our mantra is, you know, embrace and then you extend, right? So these are the software components we have. So you only need one single AVTX controller for all the clouds. That's very important because I get this question a lot that uh, do I need to deploy one controller per cloud? No, just one controller and it will manage control everything, right? Uh, in terms of licensing agreement, you don't have to sign any separate license. You can just start even today in a metered model, pay as you go. And this is best for POCs and single use cases. And we also have option for enterprise agreement. So you can purchase the, bring your own license uh, through our sales team. And that's how you can actually deploy the controller and deploy your MCNA. Um, you can also use the credits from AWS. So if you have AWS credit, you can also use it to, to pay for for the services. Okay, so this slide will give you a quick look into what we are going to cover in in coming session. And uh, it will just try to bring everything in one single slide. So, so you have a high level overview of, um, sorry, what happened? I think I went to all the way towards the end. Okay. So yeah, so let's talk about the core features. Obviously I'm not discussing each and every feature here, but let's take a look at the core feature. So first thing is the controller. When you go into the cloud portal, you launch the controller and that actually provides you the intelligent orchestration and control. It's a multi-account, multi-subscription enabled. So if you have like thousands of account, in some cases, some customers, they actually have this as a huge problem where they have multiple accounts and uh, they don't know how to manage even when they are creating the a simple VPC peering in AWS, uh, you know, you create the peerings, the other guy has to accept, then you're talking to this guy who is the owner for the second VPC and it's a mess. So yeah, so that's uh, use case number one. Then we have the advanced networking for uh, multi-cloud and multi-region, right? So we, we saw that transit network before. So this is exactly what this feature is talking about. And then you're building this overlay on top of multiple clouds when it's about to connect these clouds together, right? So you you have that um, option in the, in the platform and it extends across all the clouds. And number three is the high performance encryption. So this is the the thing that you will notice, when, the first thing at least I noticed when I um, started using the cloud, a, I saw that it's only, when you're building the IPsec tunnel, you only have 1.25 GB throughput. And I always thought that, you know, cloud will give me like, you know, a lot of throughput, a lot of bandwidth, but that's not the case. So when you're about to 
build these tunnels, um, it's only 1.25, but we actually cross that barrier. We provide you the line rate uh, encryption or with our patented technology. So that's the feature we will also cover in coming slides. Uh, side to cloud is very important. Like I said, you will have um, always have a case to connect your cloud to your branch location. Um, unless everything is moved into the cloud and there are a lot of companies who are, you know, hundred percent in the cloud. So they don't actually use this feature, but yeah, it's, it's there for the customers who are still in the middle. Then we have um, direct connect. Of course, it's a side to cloud option. Cloudman is a very special case where we actually are enabling uh, a lot of Cisco devices to connect to cloud. Because uh, when you talk to these uh, vendors, like if you talk to Cisco, for example, they will tell you to use WebTala, for example, right? In a lot of cases, that's not the, the solution because it's a rip and replace. You need to buy a different box maybe, right? What about if you have some old Cisco router sitting in your branches and you just want a simple connectivity to the cloud? So this is where we have the cloud van, which actually manages all those Cisco routers through the controller. And not only that, it provides um, a secure and the low latency connectivity back to your, your cloud data center. A smart SAML user VPN is, is getting extremely popular, especially in this uh, COVID-19 era where a lot of customers are uh, working remotely and they are looking for a user VPN solution, which is um, SAML based, provides all the um, authentication and authorization through Okta, Duo and whatnot. So they are using our, our solution because uh, there is a promotion also going on. You can use it for free, I think, by the till the end of uh, June. So yeah, go take a look. Secure egress, ingress. So sending traffic out towards internet, getting it from the internet, ingress. We provide all that security. Firewall network is about inserting the next generation firewall into the traffic flow. When you do it, cloud native way, you are challenged and limited by their performance limitation. Number one, 1 1.25 GB IPsec throughput, right? Number two, you have to use SNAT if you're using those firewalls in active, active fashion. And when you choose SNAT, you know you lose the visibility, right? It breaks so many things like the licensing server and so many uh, logging server and whatnot. So we are solving all those problems, providing you the firewall network, we call it Finet, without any compromises, okay? And then last is the operational tool. So we have tools uh, built into the platform like flight path, a packet capture, trace route, ping and whatnot. And then we have extreme visibility through Copilot that we'll also show you today. All right, so now I think I should take you into the controller and show you how it actually looks like. So the first thing is, uh, is about the marketplace. So if you go into the marketplace, you search Aviatrix, this is AWS marketplace, you will see the pay as you go for customers who are just uh, trying to deploy maybe one or two use cases or checking things out. So you can go with this option is uh, frictionless, you just start using it, right? And then you have the bring your own license. So in this case, you have to talk to our sales team, they'll give you the license and then yeah, life is good from there on. So when you deploy this, um, and the <clears throat> deployment guide is actually here on the, if I show you docs.aviatrix.com webpage. Um, sorry, what happened? Something docs.aviatrix.com. Sorry about the typo. Yeah, so if you go here on the getting started guide, we have guides available for all the major clouds. So in AWS case, uh, it's just uh, very simple. You follow the steps, you click on this, it will launch the cloud formation template and it will you know, just deploy the, the, the AMI or instance for you. So once, once it is done, then you will go to the, to the browser and type the IP address of your um, newly deployed AVTX controller. And when you log in, this is the dashboard you see. So we'll show you um, how your cloud topology looks like, the number of account, number of gateways, site to cloud connection. And if there is problem, we'll also show you like this is red or you know orange if, if there are issues in there, right? So the deployment um, is something you will see here on our 
on our main dashboard. So you can you can see I have uh, some GCP deployed here, and we'll also show you the latency from uh, this transit to the spoke, for example, and a lot of other details. Bottom, you will see the matrix from the controller and also from the from the gateways. So this is the visibility I was talking about. Right, so if you're using the cloud native construct, for example, the TGW, obviously you won't be able to see how much data is being you know, sent through this gateway or the memory buffer or you know, all this information, but this, this actually gives you all this details, all the visibility that you need, right? So yeah, user VPN also, you will can see how many users were, uh, were logging into your system. Uh, then onboarding, onboarding is extremely simple. So you just click on AWS, for example, you provide the license, provide the name, the account number, you click create, and that's how you actually connect the controller to your, your cloud, that's it. Um, so what we have done, we have actually given a very use case workflow-based approach to deploy the use cases. So if you go there, you will see uh, you have use cases like remote user VPN. Uh, multi-cloud peering, site to cloud, or uh, firewall network, right? So we'll show you step by step what you need to do in order to enable this use case, right? So in this case, we are doing everything for you. You are launching the firewall from the marketplace. We are creating the security domain. You will learn that uh, and enabling a lot of features. Another important thing to remember is that this uh, controller has the help available throughout and it is context aware. So let's say if you see this feature and if you don't know what exactly it's, it's doing, then you can click on this link and it will show you uh, what to do or the explanation of that feature. Right, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is what it is. So the most important thing is when you deploy the controller, this is how or where you will begin. You will start deploying the transit, AVTX transit network. And we'll give you this, this guide or step-by-step step by step approach to launch the transit gateway. This is a VTX gateway. You can select the cloud. You specify the name, the count name, the region, right? We pull all this information. Um, then you will specify the VPC where you want to deploy it. Yeah, it's transit gateway. So it should be deployed in the transit uh, VPC, for example. And um, yeah, and then you will specify the the size of the gateway, like I said, this is T2 micros, the smallest as you can get. And you click create and it will just create it for you, right? And it's highly available. You will create it with the active mesh mode enabled, which means you're deploying two gateways and then all active active creating the crisscross connections. So, so this is how it is, right? And then the cloud van, uh, site to cloud, open VPN security, and a lot of useful tools that will show you in our uh, day two ops section towards the end today. Uh, in the setting, you have the, the options like um, to send the logs to third party system and, and whatnot, okay? So that is the UI to where I wanted to show you. Now let's go back to the, so the, all the features I showed you in the controller in the previous slide, you can easily club them together into these four big areas. Number one is the transit. These are the solutions we are providing in the transit space, security, automations and operations, okay? 